Hi guys, and thank you so much for watching this uh, vlog type uh, kind of bushcraft video. Uh, this one is a special one because, well, some of you guys really wanted to know how I got involved into bushcraft, what I'm doing to maintain it. Um, by the way, uh, before I get comments about it, the idea is not too bad because I'm filming this in the evening here. Um, well, what got me started first was, well, I wanted to do something very completely different with my life. Back then, I was being jobless, uh, the home that I was living in, kind of terrible, too small, cramped, and I really wanted to do something else. Most of my day was spent watching the Discovery Channel, and I'm not sure about the Discovery Channel in your particular country, I live in the Netherlands, and you have quite a few survival and bushcraft uh, programs on there with the usual uh, heroes. Well, we all know the names like Ray Mears, uh, Ed Stafford, Cody Lundin, Dave Canterbury, Matt Graham, uh, even Bear Grylls. Uh, we all know the names by now, right? And then there was the show called Alone, in which uh, bushcrafters, well, they uh, start to live alone. Speaking about the show called Alone, uh, that was scripted so heavily, so let's not even go there yet. Maybe later in the video. Now, what got me uh, excited about what I saw there was they were able to uh, live a completely alternative lifestyle out in the wild, completely on their own, and being able to find food, find water, build shelter, and so on. So that got the interest sparked. But then I got to YouTube. Now, don't get me wrong, there's not a lot wrong with uh, YouTube per se, <coughs> but um, on YouTube, you get a lot of different points of view by a lot of different people, of course. And their opinions, they all uh, are relative to what they know, the experience they have, the area they are in. And therefore, it's not really applicable to every single area or bushcraft technique or Let's go. So that is um, one of the things that is sadly enough lacking YouTube because you can get all the knowledge you want by just watching the videos. But if you uh, do not practice with your bare hands, going outside, doing things, making sure that you actually understand what has been said, well, you're never going to be a true bushcrafter. Second to that, um, when I uh, got interested, well, of course, I already had a love of being outside in nature. Um, always wanted to know more. <clears throat> but there is always going to be local rules, right? Now, if you... Uh, take a few different countries, like I'm in the Netherlands, uh, uh, the closest forest where you can uh, get decently lost in my area is in Germany. That doesn't work. Uh, in Germany, there's very different rules compared to the Netherlands, compared to Great Britain, compared to the United States, and especially compared to uh, the Scandinavian areas where you can actually uh, camp relatively without laws. But um, let's get into that. 
Uh, first of all, I want to uh, mention that you uh, always have to be uh, uh, very sure about the local rules, laws, like uh, where can you make a fire, where can't you make a fire, uh, where is it completely prohibited to camp out, uh, what can you do, how can you practice. Be very familiar with those laws and you can best find those on your regional internet pages, of course. Now, when uh, you're actually going outside to practice, may I advise to you guys that have a garden uh, to actually practice in your garden some stuff before going outside? That's a great tip right there because uh, you will never be able to really test out everything in the wild and when you run into trouble you're actually in trouble right so practice in your area in your backyard then go outside make sure that you have the knowledge have the gear have the tools know how to use them and then staying outside being happy gets relatively easy you'll have a grand old time when you practice first so there's the local laws, there's YouTube, and then there's you. And when it comes to living out in the wild, finding your own food, making your own shelter, uh, the biggest problem, especially in the beginning, is going to be you. Now, why do I say that to aspiring bushcrafters? Well, easy. Uh, when you don't have to uh, practice, but you do have the knowledge, that may become a problem against yourself. I'm not sure if it is in your particular case, thank you for watching by the way, but it may be a problem. Because some of the guys uh, out there that are relatively new to bushcraft, they know every single thing there is to know about well, eat, eating plants, uh, the edible plants versus the plants you do not want to eat. Then, but they couldn't tie a not to even tie their own shoes. I don't know. I guess they're out there. Maybe. Right? So, practice the different skills. <clears throat> uh, make sure you know that there's no laws against you uh, being out there, practicing, camping. Make sure that you are able to uh, build a fire right there. Is it private area? Is it public area? Is it prohibited area? You best wanna find out before you run into trouble, especially with the law, because they can set you back a couple of years for burning down the forest. And while you're in jail, you're not going to get much practice of bushcraft, obviously. <clears throat> then, uh, theoretical knowledge. How does that compare to being actually busy practically in the woods? Well, you can read and memorize every single book being written since the day Christ walked the earth. Very possible. But if you don't practice what has been said there, you'll never know to distinguish left from right, and you could be going into the woods with two left hands or two right hands. Hmm. That's something is to think about, right? So I really want to encourage you guys, especially the ones that uh, uh, don't really get outside very often. Go outside, appreciate nature, respect nature, get to know the environment, make sure that uh, everything that you see around there is something that you know. Eventually, it's a process of course. And The rest, really, from 
transferring from an aspiring bushcrafter to being a bushcrafter, that's a very thin line, very thin. You know why? And as soon as you get out there and really do things, you'll instantly become a bushcrafter. Maybe not the most experienced one immediately, probably not. But by doing things, repeating it, making mistakes, solving mistakes, solving problems, redoing it, succeeding, and that is how you become a bushcrafter properly. So, uh, conclusion. Get all the knowledge you uh, can possibly get. Get out there. Make sure you're going to have a grand old time. Knowledge doesn't weigh a lot. So you might as well take a lot of it with you. So, hey, guys. I hope you uh, have enjoyed this uh, short video. And hope to see you next time, right? Catch you next time.